my name's Stephanie, for those of you who don't know who I am, aka The Restyler here on YouTube. First of all, thank you so much for dropping by and watching this video. And second of all, welcome to all of my new subscribers. It's absolutely amazing to have you on board and join this creative, small, but really quickly growing Restyler family of ours. And of course, lots and lots of love to all of my oldies and faithful subscribers as well. I have now reached over 500 subscribers, which is like kind of mind blowing to me. That's like 500 people in this community. 500 people part of this family. So like that is really amazing to me. So I'm so glad you're all here and all on board and so kind and loving and supportive. I love you guys all so much and I'm so grateful and thankful for you all. I'm just so happy that I get to express my creativity and share my ideas and videos and DIYs and whatever it be with you guys and that you guys actually think that's cool. Group hug. Oh my gosh. Ow, my neck. Speaking of my neck, we have been sleeping on our mattress in the laundry floor for the last probably like four or five days as we have been painting the room that I'm now sitting in. So for those of you who have been following me for a while, you'll probably have noticed that I have never filmed on a white plain backdrop as before the last few days, we literally did not have one plain white wall in our entire house. Now, I know that painting walls and renovations is a little bit off topic for this DIY video. However, I do really, really want to share with you guys what's been going on in my life, in our lives, this last couple of weeks as a family now. So for those of you who want to find out and do want to know a bit more about what's been happening and going on in my life lately, along with a little update on what's going to be happening on my channel over the next couple of weeks, as it's very exciting, I've got some great new projects and ideas coming up for you guys. And I also have one little but quite cool and interesting announcement for you guys. So yeah, for those of you who are interested in all that, stick around to the end and I'll give you all the juicy little deets. Alright, so with all that being said now guys, let's move on and talk about the DIY tutorial that I've got for you today. So today I've got for you some really cute, shabby chic, I would say even French provincial farmhouse style apothecary. Well, that word is always so hard to say. Does anyone else struggle to say apothecary? Am I even saying it right? So these apothecary storage jars for your bathroom, which you could use to keep your Q-tips slash cotton pads in, or you could put your toothbrushes in, makeup, or alternatively, you could use them on your desk to put pens and rulers and scissors in, or you could even use it on your vanity to put makeup, did I say makeup, and hairbrushes, and just your basic everyday small items that you use. So you'll see in the tutorial as well that I show you two different ways to finish the base part of your storage jars which is pretty much the white with the terracotta peeping through and then I've done a nice kind of green toned grey with black peeping through. I did that just to show you guys a little bit more diversity and hopefully give you a bit more inspiration if you'd like to make one or more of these for yourselves. So as well as showing you a few different coloured finishes you could use, I've also tried out something that I've really wanted to try for a long time now, which is how to make and achieve these really unique, personalized, raised emblems on not only the bases of these jars, but also on pretty much anything you choose to. You'll see how easy and cost efficient it really is. And speaking of costs, I also want to highlight that these jars literally come in at a cost of under five dollars to make and probably even cheaper in the US so that's something to get excited about not to mention these would probably have to be one of my favorite DIYs that I've done so far I don't know that's just me personally but you guys feel free to let me know down in the comments below 
Also, I'll quickly mention that for this white base, I didn't actually glue on a jar. I just wanted to leave this one bare and free to show you guys a few styling options with it as well. So before I give any more away, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. And if you are new here and you are not subscribed already, please don't forget to click that big red subscribe button down below and join this restyle family too. And also if you like this DIY, please don't forget to let me know down in the comments below. Finally, with all that being said, let's now get on into the tutorial. Alrighty guys, so I started out with this project with some standard chicken wire and making sure that it was very thin and easy to manipulate and very flexible and malleable. And then instead of using mason jars, I chose to use these 750mm candle jars that were $3 each at my local dollar store. And now for the base part to these apothecary jars, all that I used were some small terracotta pots and some matching corresponding terracotta pot plates. I also used some very thin malleable wire along with some basic jewelry wire cutters and pliers, some Rust-Oleum flat black spray paint, some of my trusty go-to Hames house paint in the shade white on white. Standard paintbrush and trusty old hot glue gun and hot glue sticks. And finally, last but definitely not least, just some medium grit sandpaper. So I started out by measuring the circumference and the height of my candle jar, just using a standard tape measure. that came to 29 centimeters by 13 centimeters. So once I had my measurements, I then unraveled my chicken wire and then marked out the measurements that I needed accordingly. And I just used a permanent marker slash Sharpie to mark that out onto the chicken wire to help me see where I needed to cut. And once I had marked out my measurements, I then went ahead with my scissors and then just cut out my piece of chicken wire. Now I chose to use scissors over the wire cutters in the end as they were much quicker and far more efficient. Also keep note not to use your best fabric cutting scissors for this, just use some cheap ones that aren't too precious. So because I chose to make two jars, I then cut out two pieces of chicken wire. And here I'm just neatening up and cutting off any extra long scraggly bits of wire to make it safer and prevent leaving any sharp edges remaining. So once I had my two pieces of chicken wire all cut out, I then took them outside and then gave them a good coat of my flat black spray paint by Rust-Oleum. And I just did one layer on each side, both the front and the back. Now moving on to the base part of these apothecary jars, I just took one of my terracotta pots and flipped it upside down and then taking my black sharpie marker, I just sketched out and drew my own personalised emblem that I wanted on there, an F for my last name, voice of course. Now comes the really cool and fun part. 
I then just took my hot glue gun and filled in all the black gaps that I had just drawn out with my marker. Just like colouring in but with hot glue gun. Once I'd finished filling in all my black lines with the hot glue, I then just cleaned up and snapped off all those little strings that the hot glue gun leaves behind. You all know what I'm talking about, I'm sure of it. And this is what gives you the effect of a nice raised personalised emblem. So not only does this technique and little trick take not very long to do, but also cost you next to nothing and gives really great results. So as you will have just seen, I also went ahead and made another design as well. And once I had completed that, I then went ahead with my hot glue gun and just stuck those terracotta pot plates on top of my terracotta pots. I also found out in this project that hot glue gun and terracotta works really well together as terracotta is such a porous material the hot glue just stuck really well to it. I then took out the two bases that I had made the emblem designs on and spray painted them black as well using the exact same Rust-Oleum flat black spray paint. And I made sure to do two coats of the spray paint for these ones as I knew I'd be distressing them with sandpaper later on. So while those two were drying, I went ahead and started to paint the remaining plain terracotta pot base with my hands white house paint. And once I finished painting that, I set it aside to dry as well. And then I started to make and mix my own coloured paint using that same white house paint from before and just adding some plain black acrylic paint along with some green and different coloured bits of brown and ochre yellow coloured acrylic paints together to reach my desired grey green shade that I was aiming for. dried black pot, I started to paint with that shade that I just made on top of the black, covering it all completely. And I'll also mention that I did two coats of this paint on top of the black spray paint as well. And then once I had set those two aside to dry, I then took the exact same paint and brushed on two coats of that into the lids of the jars. And then I also brushed it onto the two bases of the bottoms of the jars. Which I did for two reasons. A, to cover up the hot glue gun for when I glued the jars to the bases and two, because it's my pet peeve, trying to take off those nasty sticker barcodes as well. And so once that had all dried, I then took the freshly sprayed black chicken wire and wrapped that around my jar. And so then to secure it, I just took that fine thin wire and started to weave it back and forth through each hole of the chicken wire from side to side. Pretty much just like you're sewing it together, but with the wire. And then just securing it with a few more knots and loops at each end.
and for the final part of this step I curled in all the remaining sharp edges towards the jar using my jewellery pliers. And then once the two bases had fully dried I then took my sandpaper and sanding block and started to rub and sand off the paint in the areas and parts that I felt that the pots would naturally have distressed in if it was happening over time. Like all the outer corners and edges. And this part's also really fun as you start to see the colour that you painted underneath start to peek through. Now it's time to adhere the jars to the jar bases. So taking my hot glue gun, I dribbled on some more glue around the whole rim of the base plate and then stuck and pressed on my jar. And voila, it is finished. And then for a final finishing touch, I then took some black twine and wrapped it around the knob a few times and secured it with a bow. And so here's the finished final product, guys. I hope you really enjoy them and really like them and I also hope that this has inspired you to make your own versions of them. I'm really really pleased with how these turned out. I would have to say they're probably one of my favourite DIYs to date but let me know in the comments below what you think and if you agree with me or not. I'd love to hear your opinion too. And so here I'm just showing you a few of the different ways that I thought of that you could style or use these items in your own houses, i.e. for toothbrushes, hairbrushes, cotton pads, q-tips, makeup, pens and stationery, or I just thought you could even use them in your kitchen, preserving food products, or holding utensils. So yeah, the list really does go on, guys. And I'd also like to mention that this idea was actually inspired by, by Kelly from Kelly Barlow Creations here on YouTube, her dollar store mason jar DIY. I just decided to do my own version and twist on it. And if you haven't seen Kelly's channel before, I definitely recommend you go and check it out. She's got some fantastic DIYs and ideas on there as well. Here I'm just showing you how I styled this plain white base that I made as well in two different ways using either a pillar candle or switching it out for this little plastic faux glass crystal Daiso container that I picked up for $2.80. watching I really hope you liked this DIY and if you did then please don't forget to let me know about it by leaving me a comment below giving me a thumbs up and subscribing if you're not already so with all that being said let's get on to this little update that I was telling you about before so you may want to get a little bit more cozy and comfortable get a drink get in your favorite chair or get on your bed and just relax this might take a good like five minutes just download all this information. All right, so I have about three main points that I wanna share with you guys in this little update. Okay, so, point one. So, I've been following the Daily DIYer for a little while now, and I noticed that she has 
a Facebook page with a brag board on it, which is pretty much like an album on her Facebook page where she posts photos of projects that you guys and other people have made. So I think it's really encouraging and inspiring and I love the concept. So, this is part of the announcement. It's not a very big one, don't get too excited, but it's cool. I've now started a Facebook page called The Restyler. And on this Facebook page, I will be having a brag board there for you guys to showcase your work. They don't have to be ones that I have made. They can be your complete own unique creative ideas or solutions or DIYs that you want to choose to share with me and the rest of the family here. Or of course, they can be replicas of some of my DIYs or inspired by my DIYs and creations as well. I really just want to create a space where other people feel safe and happy to share their ideas, to ask questions and get inspired as well. So apart from all those pointers about the Facebook page, it's also going to be a space where I can sync it with my Instagram. So for those of you who want to see more of me and what I do in my day-to-day -day life and more regular frequent updates, then Facebook and Instagram is also a great place to find me on now. And also, as a part of this Facebook page, I've also created a linked group, which is not exclusive, anyone can join, but I just wanted to make it even more intimate and private space with discussions, questions, and ideas to be thrown around and put out there. Just a really, again, safe, happy, fun, and creative space for anyone who is also enthusiastic about all things DIY, creative, renovations, decor, halls, homewares, farmhouse, cottage style, provincial, you name it. And just create a real tight-knit family community on there as well for us. So I'll put all the links to those down in the description box below, of course. So of course, please feel free to go and like the page and share your projects and ideas and thoughts with the group and go ahead and join the group if you want to as well. And that's pretty much that. So I'm excited about that, guys. I hope you are too. And now on to point two. So point two is pretty much just giving a little bit of info and update about our renovations. So not many of you probably know this, but I will announce this now. Davide and I have officially started renovating and doing up our house. We are really excited as we finally have white walls in our house, which we've been wanting for so long. Well, at least a good six months now anyway. No, maybe even more. Probably more. Because before I even moved into this house, I wanted to paint the walls white. So I'm going to go ahead and say like nine months we've been wanting to do this. So we finally finished our first paint job in the house and we started off with our master bedroom which I'm sitting in right now. It did take us about five days to finish painting because we have shiplap slash BJ walls all throughout our house which just is a lot more time consuming than a regular plasterboard obviously because you have to cut into all the different grooves, every single groove pretty much and also masking out things and taping things off and cutting in it's just more time consuming as well because of all the little ridges in the wood. But we made it, we got there in the end, and I'm really happy. And I also must say that I feel we've become quite the painters. If anyone needs their home painted, we're your people. But seriously, no, we're not. We, we do not claim to be professional painters in the least. Anyway, so with that being said, I will announce now that I will be starting a new series on my channel. I don't know what it's going to be called. What should I call it, guys? If you have any suggestions, let me know. But it's going to all be about just us making over and renovating our house room by room, section by section. So that's going to be fun and hopefully give loads more inspiration to you guys as well, as well as a great learning curve, mainly for me and Darby there. But <laughs> if we can help you guys learn something too, then that's even more fantastic. I'll have a video of the complete makeover of this room up probably and hopefully by the end of next week. So stay tuned, I'm really excited for that one. And now onto the last and third point, 
I'm also starting another series here on my channel called My Magnolia, which I'm super excited about and I've been planning for a few months now. As you may know, I am quite a fan of Fixer Upper, Magnolia Market, Joanna Gaines, Chip Gaines, just the whole family, the whole show, the whole style, everything farmhouse. So for this series, if you haven't guessed already, it's going to be about all things Magnolia Market. I'll be showing you all how to do DIYs to get the look for less or just how to get the look in general because there is no Magnolia Market in Australia yet. So that is my main stance for doing this series because I really love the products and I do not think they ship internationally or at least to Australia yet. I'll also be doing a collaboration in this series with another YouTuber whom I'm sure you all know already as well, to which I will leave as a surprise for a little bit longer. And I think with all that finally being said, I have shown you the DIY, I have updated you all, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end for those of you who have. And also a massive, massive thank you again to all of my lovely subscribers Subscribers. I really appreciate all your love, support, comments and just your kindness and generosity and really just welcoming me so well into this amazing community here on YouTube. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a great day, evening, night, week and until next time guys, see you later.